Hello everyone. In this particular series, I want to talk about how to do open QA using dense retriever. And to begin this series, well, I would like to talk a little about what exactly is open QA and discuss something about its history, a very brief history of what all has been done till now. And then we'll conclude this video with talking about how exactly it is different when it comes to loss formulation from a normal QA. So we are all aware of the traditional QA models where, um, where we are given a context, a passage context, which let's say here C, and then we have a particular question. Let's say this information is or talking about rocks and we want to know what are the different types of rocks, the different types of rock and the traditionally the normal QA models they were either of two types they would be either extractive or they would be generative so an extractive model will usually what it will do it will find a correct span within the context let's say from character number 233 to character number 256 are the answers and in a generative model, it will usually predict the entire string. I'm not sure how many types of rocks there actually are, but let's say there are 110 types of rocks. So the model will actually predict each and uh, the entire character in the target sequence, like 110 types of rocks. So this is what a traditional QA model usually looks like. The key difference between a normal QA, this particular QA and open QA is this part context in open QA there is no fixed context for the entire uh, for the question in open QA you will simply get a question let's say again the same question number of rocks uh, sorry number of rocks question but here you have to select the context as well so we'll take a very big text corpus it could be um, Wikipedia or any other text corpus that you want which will have uh, the knowledge about and text about a lot of different topics that might exist out there. It could be rocks, presidents, you know, countries, all that information. So the idea in OpenQA is that given a question, we first use something called a retriever to find the relevant passages. So this paragraph, this particular article could be on rocks, you know, another article could be on um, geology so the idea of retriever is uh, is that it will find relevant context and give it to the QA model just a second so a retriever will give us passages about rocks it will give us a passage of geology to a QA model which is then supposed to give an answer So, just to recap, in traditional normal, uh, in traditional QA models, there all there all only used to be only one context. But in open QA, the idea is that whatever the question that we ask, the model should be able to get it from uh, not uh, anywhere possible. But yeah, whatever the text corpus that we are giving it to it as an input, it should be able to retrieve. So, talking about a little bit of its history, so. In this video series, as, as I said, we'll be talking about dense retrievers. But before dense retrievers, there used to be something called sparse retrievers. So, in sparse retrievers, they will use something uh, term based algorithms like TF, IDF, and, uh, and BM25, which will see the occurrence of key keywords that occur in the question. Like for our particular question, the most important keyword we can say is rocks. So sparse retrievers would generally uh, search the entire text corpus, let's say Wikipedia, and they look for keywords, they look for passages where rocks is very important to the particular passage. Let's say if rock is the title itself is rock and the most talked word in the entire article is rocks. So they would be looking for that particular keyword and then uh, sparse retriever would do the will return these uh, passages where rocks is used or is important to the context and then that will be passed on to the qa model 
the problem with this approach was there is no way to train these sparse retrievers i mean these are uh, there is no learning as such that is possible in this uh, in these algorithms like tfidf and bm25 so th traditionally these pipelines of retriever and qa were separate and there was no particular joint training possible so the idea was that this sparse retriever will give you some context and then you will fine tune the qa model on that particular context and you will either use a re ranker or something to you know get the most relevant passages among the uh, passages that were returned by the retrievers so the next evolution in this idea was very simple like why can't we train the retriever and the qa model together and uh, for that you will need a dense retriever a uh, dense retriever uh, i might be wrong there could be some sparse retriever which which are also trainable i'm, I'm not trying to be exhaustive here but i'm just trying to give a general uh, idea about this and you have the qa model so either given uh, qa pairs like let's say you have what are the different types of rocks let's say there are 110 types of rock what are the different types of volcanoes volcanoes and how many countries are there you know given this question and pair qa pairs can we train this entire thing together so uh, one of the first key parts when I mean, building uh, you know dense retrievers was ict which was inverse closed task and was part of the paper orqa which we'll discuss later in this series and uh, yeah so just a disclaimer again in this uh, particular video series we only talk about how open qa is different from uh, the normal qa uh, retrievers uh, like uh, ict and uh, dpr and rel will be covering in a separate article or a separate series but here in this video series we'll be talking about orqa uh, qa formulation in dpr uh, rag yes and rag these three formulations okay so talking about difference in loss formulation so just to quickly revise let's say in a generative qa model generative qa model the loss formulation was similar like me uh, the loss formulation obviously uh, we were using negative log likelihood as the loss function and the likelihood of a particular token of a, let's say a particular sequence as an output given p of y given x where x is the input uh, context that we give we used to be from i to n probability of yi given x and uh, all the tokens that came before it so from yi to i sorry i minus 1 and it used to be a multiplication of all the individual tokens that came before it so that was the likelihood or the probability of a particular sequence for a generative qa model in extractive qa models the idea was for this uh, entire sequence length so this length here is sequence length we predict two separate variables like how post how likely it is that each of the token in this sequence length is a start logit and uh, so this length here is also sequence length and let's say for each token let's say here only five tokens are there 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 4 5 so we predict you know what is the probability of each of these token to be a start logit and each of these pro each of these token to be a uh, end logit and then we'll do softmax over these values to to get probabilities over the over these uh, logits and then we will choose we'll use cross entropy cross entropy where we have the probabilities of the logits and we choose the probability given by the model to the golden start of the span in the gold end of the span so that would be let's say if the golden start span was uh, 
three so that the model will just will just do log of probability of uh, start uh, start logic tensor at the position of three plus the log of probability of end logit tensor and let's say the gold uh, end span was five and that used to be a loss so this was traditionally how the loss function was uh, made in in problem in qa problems but in open qa there is one additional component that we have to consider which is the probability given to the each retrieved uh, paragraph so okay so uh, let's say there is our entire corpus okay generally for each of these passages that are there in the entire corpus we uh, encode them using a part of the retriever which is the uh, passage encoder and we get embeddings for each of these paragraph it will be dense embeddings here for each and every paragraph and for a new question let's say again question for this video what are the total types of rocks so the question encoder question encoder in the retriever will create an embedding for this also and it will be let's say some small embedding of and these embeddings are for almost same size like 256 or 128 whatever you want and then we calculate these cross product uh, sorry dot product of this embedding with all these embeddings just to find just to you know able just to get uh, information with to get similar information that could be present in different passages so the idea is that each of whenever you finally let's say if we select 10 separate documents here so there will be certain probability associated with each document so let's say for the document the dot product score was very high you know uh, was very high so in some sense we try to give it a sort of probabilities uh, we do a normal softmax over this which we take as uh, doc probs which is something like the probabilities that the retriever assigns to each particular retrieve passage now the problem is that previously we had a separate formulation for uh, qa loss formulation for generative and extractive method there was a different formulation but now we also have to consider the probabilities that are given by our retriever for the same question what are the types of rock you know types of rocks the question if we get the wikipedia article of let's say literally the ro <laughs> on rocks then the probability of getting the correct answer which is 110 here will be different when we give this rocks wikipedia article to a qa model as compared to let's say we give a, a, a wikipedia article on presidents you understand so when we give the uh, uh, article on president to a QA model already there is very less chance of getting the correct answer I mean it could be like let's say some country has only 110 presidents but the final prediction the final answer prediction sorry answer prediction inherently depends on the probability of the retrieved documents oh sorry it's not coming on screen so answer prediction inherently depends on on the uh, probability of the retrieved documents so how does open qa uh, assimilate this and how does open qa formulate uh, this problem to understand that we'll go to our next video in next video we'll talk about marginal log likelihood which is the loss function mostly used here in uh, in open qa settings we have to understand what that is and how we include uh, the probabilities of each of these articles retrieved articles or passages retrieved by the retriever into our final cost function for open qa for that uh, 
let's watch the next video thank you